Hello and welcome. I've got something a bit special today because I'm part of a five person collaboration. I think there were five of us. Um, and it was organized by Violet Connie. So a big thank you to her for doing that. And I will pop links to her channel and to everybody else's videos up in the cards in the top right hand corner, as well as in the description of this video. And this little lady started off with Violet Connie and she's a Frankenstein, which means that we have each done a bit of her body. So we've kind of put her together piece by piece, each of us adding something. And I'm lucky last. So I had a bit of reservation, I have to admit, at being the last, which means I have the best chance of messing up everybody's work because everybody else has gone before me. But I came up with a cunning plan, which made me feel much better, which was to have a bit of a go using tracing paper. So I could scribble away and make a big old mess without messing up everybody's work um, while I was in the sort of thinking stage. And I, I'm doing the legs and feet, as you can see, and I don't have too much room there. So I decided the best thing would be to have her sitting down because she seems to be holding Australia. So I think if you were going to perch Australia on your knee, you would probably want to be sitting down to do it. And I toyed with a few different ideas there. Uh, it's quite fun drawing feet, but they can be a bit of a challenge. Um, and I was playing with different kinds of footwear. So I did wonder if some sort of funky boots might not suit her. And uh, that might go quite well with the sort of alien arm that she's got. But in the end, because she's holding Australia, she must be a good little Aussie girl. And quite common footwear here is flip-flops. Now in Australia, they call them thongs. Uh, to me, that's underwear, but you know, when in Rome. So I decided I would put some flip-flops on her, or thongs, as they say here. And in the top corner of this picture, there is a lovely daisy. So I quite liked the idea of adding some daisies to her shoes there to, to tie those uh, in as well. It's really fun having a look at what everybody else has done uh, before me and then trying to do something that's going to bring everything together. So I added the daisy in to tie in with something that had happened earlier and it was quite nice that the colour scheme's all pretty well decided for me because uh, I'm going to just work with what everybody else has chosen. And I also noticed that I think it was probably Connie has given her some rather cute uh, beaded jewellery. So I decided she would have to have an anklet that matched that. Uh, I had a bit of trouble figuring out exactly what position to put those feet in. Uh, and I had the toes turning out the wrong way, which is anatomically rather awkward. I don't think you would be able to do that unless you've got the worst knock knees in the world. So I realised that what I needed to do was turn her little feet in. And once I had a little drawing that I was happy with, I traced it by uh, colouring the back with graphite and then going over my line work uh, with a pen to transfer the line that I'm going to use. And because she's sitting down, I, I feel I do need to put some sort of a background in. And I've put in a very lopsided background which you'll see I work out only right at the end and fix it uh, back then. Then I must say it's a bit of a tense moment to go in with the paint uh, worrying that what you do is not going to fit in with what everybody else has done but it was a lot of fun because I do love mixed media. I That's kind of where I started out on my arty journey was with mixed media uh, and you'll see that by the end of this, uh, my entire desk is covered with all the things and I was using uh, a good deal of my supplies, which is an awful lot of fun to do. And I'm, I tried to find a green that matched the skin tones that uh, everybody else had done because she's a, a Frankenstein, so she's got this lovely green complexion. And then uh, she's a good little lady, so I think she needed a bit of a skirt. Uh, and I've gone with purple to tie in with her lovely hair and because it's rather nice with the green. And what I'm doing is just popping in a base colour 
uh, with watercolour and then I can go back in and add details uh, later on with coloured pencils and that sort of thing. So, But these flowers were enormous fun, they were about one of my favourite things, as are uh, those toenails. I don't know why, but toenails are enormously fun to draw and paint, and if you're going to be wearing your summer flip-flops, you probably need a jolly good pedicure. So my little green lady has got these hot pink toes. Of course she has, why wouldn't she? Now, um, one of the things that I spent a bit of time trying to do was get the folds of her dress to sit right, uh, and to see if what I could do to put some sort of shadowing to get uh, Australia sitting behind uh, her little knees there. So all the while while I'm adding these colours I'm thinking about trying to put in a, a convincing shadow to show that she's got this big weighty object sitting on her lap. Uh, and if you're wondering what that little bit down on the bottom right is, that is Tasmania. Uh, and I did wonder whether or what to do with the skirt there because the skirt and Tasmania were uh, giving me a spot of bother but I think we're all right. You can see now that after I'd put down my sort of base layer of watercolour paint I've got out my coloured pencils and I'm going through to find the best colours that will match the paints that I chose. And working with watercolour and coloured pencil together is really rather a fun thing to do. It gives you so much scope because with the coloured pencils you've got a lot of control and if you are a little bit new to watercolour that's often one of the things that you're kind of looking for and missing. So you can start out with the watercolour and have a bit of fun splashing the paint around and covering a nice wide area uh, with the paint but then you will still be able to add some details a bit more carefully by using those coloured pencils. Uh, and you saw I've now gone on to markers. Uh, I think that was a zig marker that I had in a grey to try and put some shadowing in that I was talking about on Australia there. But I'm not sure if that worked particularly well, so I go back to that with something else in a minute. And then the, that's the little beaded anklet that I was talking about that I'm wanting to try and match Connie's necklace and the beads around her little mask that she's wearing. And it's that was quite fun because I'm trying to guess what sort of paints and materials Connie used to try and make it match. And I've got lots of different shades of green and I'm slowly building up and trying to keep those quite well blended. I thought about doing the black line first because I think everybody else has used the black line to to do Frankie as we seem to be calling her. So I, I am intending to do that but I decided I would leave that to the end. Um, I'm kind of in two minds about the, the black line because it's the sort of thing that you can very easily do a little bit too much of. So I thought if I left it till the very end, I might it might make it easier for me to be a little bit more restrained and to not overdo it. And I'd put in a, a base colour because one of the things I feel I need to do here is to give her a good contact shadow to show that she's sitting down with her little knees up because it can be quite hard to make a character look like it's actually sitting especially how I've got her feet in that kind of awkward pose there but because she's a Frankenstein monster it's one of those chances to not worry about it too much because she's a she's a, a, a unique lady so it doesn't matter too much it's a good chance to have a go and see how she turns out and I've used a Tombow watercolour marker to add some sort of shadow there for her little feet to show that they are sitting on the ground uh, and to put the contact shadow where her, where her body is sitting on the ground there. I don't think it's enough, I think I go back and reinforce it in a minute, but this is where I have gone through my extensive collection of black pens to try and figure out which one best matches the ones that everybody else used. So I thought about what to 
outline and what to uh, leave unlined. And I decided that everybody else who's done Frankie seems to have done an outline, so I left that with the black line, but I chose to leave her shoes without the line. And then one of my favourite tools is that white coloured pencil, which is another thing that I find a bit addictive. And I use that to add some of the highlights, like on her little knees, because they I want them to look like they are sitting a little bit further forward. And there's the coloured pencil to reinforce the shadow that uh, where her body is meeting the ground that I was talking about. And one of the other things that you may have noticed before was when I put the background in, I was being very... Uh, haphazard and made it very squonk. Luckily for me I hadn't put watercolour over the uh, original pencil mark so I could still erase it. So I could fix that up and add a bit more of the ground. And there she is. Thanks for watching. Oh.